statement and then I will reveal who it is. <laughs> so, uh, our first intern. Quote, my uncanny amusement of cutting and sewing was revealed in an elementary school. Wait, I don't even know. Actually, they're not here. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Sounds like Munya. Oh, okay. Next person, this person's actually here. Here. <laughs> in addition to my training in medical school, I have developed several qualities through my years of participation in athletics that I can integrate into my medical practice. There are many hours, or through many hours of training in the gym, on the field, and with teammates, have allowed me to gain the values of hard work, determination, desire, and teamwork. And then, blah, 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 he talks about getting injured or something. Then, uh, <laughs> this led him to realize that the musculoskeletal system's proper functioning plays an integral part in every person's daily activity and routine of life. Very uh, insightful here. And I was able to experience this firsthand. So. Anders' mom. Let's all thank Anders for his hard work. I haven't seen his athletic prowess. I see to know what's going on, which is a bonus. Oh, and then we're gonna go to the top ten. So, top ten reasons you know you're an MCW resident when. Uh, so number ten. I want to do the right visit. You know that everything will be okay as long as you have a good partner. <laughs> so the next. I'll just. I just have two. So the next person. Uh, quote. I have, trained, I have traced my journey to my love of general surgery to its origin in Legos. They were my toy of choice, the vast number of colors, shapes, and sizes that allowed my mind to wander and express creativity. are a few of the many characteristics that distinguish a great general surgeon. And I will say, after having worked with this intern briefly, I would say that he embodies all of these. But I do have to tell one anecdote about Nathan Finger in My Bottom. <laughs> that typically we would we run a trauma resuscitation, we tell the patient we're going to put our finger in their bottom, but Nathan took it upon himself to tell the patient he was going to put it in his bottom. <laughs> but everyone had a okay. So thanks to Nate Brown's then uh, number nine is that you have greater than 10,000 emails from Jill Simonson. <laughs> Alright, I have uh, someone that I had the opportunity to work with when I was on the uh, ACS service and he was on trauma. He was born to be a urologist, although he didn't know it initially. Um, so on trauma, his highlights were really uh, rectal exams and uh, placing uh, <laughs> he had one trauma patient in particular that presented with a, a hematuria and a bladder mass. So he had the daily pleasure of irrigating that Foley catheter to make sure that he didn't go into clot retention. So um, clearly his dedication to Foley irrigation is why uh, he, elect, he was elected the Gold and Humanism Honor Society when he was in medical school. <laughs> so uh, congratulations on completing your intern year. Bill, I love to irrigate Foley catheters. <laughs> Number eight, your junior resident complains about too little time in the OR. Wow. But congratulations. Yeah. 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 Some early time. Someone Sorry. Uh, Someone had this. Uh, okay. Paul just said it's going to be less when he comes back out of the lab. <laughs> okay, next, next intern. I had the opportunity to work with this person at both St. Joe's and while I was on ECS. He works 
really hard. He's constantly moving. So when I questioned him about his career choice in anesthesia, he told me he pro will probably be doing jumping jacks behind the uh, <laughs> behind the blood brain barrier. There's a lot of things I love about this person, including his love and need to eat chocolate covered peanut butter rice krispie treats every day. Um, but my favorite thing about him is how excited he would get for toe amputations at St. Joe's. These were his favorite cases and my least favorite cases. So he got to do all of them. So congratulations for completing your intern year. Sean, I love doing toe amputations, Irish. <laughs> attended more conferences related to complex pancreas and endocrine surgery than general surgery. <laughs> Alright, well, one person that's not here is Bill Regali and the first three weeks that he was on my service, I always thought he was pissed off. And I understood if he really wanted to be here, but it just turned out this is how, how he looks. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, he's actually a really good, strong resident. <laughs> and I actually really enjoyed working with him. Um, the next person, Daniel Davila. Close enough, I, I can never get that right. I remember I, he was my first intern in July. We worked at St. Joe's. I remember I called him Dan and Danny, and then he quickly corrected me and said, no, it's Daniel. And, I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I figured out that he had, he had a passion for film, and when I read his personal statement, that's all he really talked about. Um, that was kind of cool. Um, the next patient, the next uh, patient, uh, uh, number six is in spite of rotations on basket for six months. You have never been in a case. The next intern, I'm going to have a hard time saying his last name, Munya Shimuku Garanga. statement 
documentary that I'm going to uh, talk about here. Yeah, I just lost it. <laughs> As a young and independent woman, I realized that my strength, confidence, and capabilities are profoundly shaped by the talented people around me. Is that well, naturally, I have been her chief for at least six to seven months this year, so I completely know where you're coming from. <laughs> now, I've actually had the pleasure of working with Rachel for many, uh, many months this year. She's a talented and hard worker, and she's actually picked up on a couple skills of senior residents. Um, and this last one I've seen on the ACS service, the ability to lose your pager or have it turn off whenever a ridiculous consult from the MIC. <laughs> Uh, and Rachel, you conclude your personal statement by saying, stepping forward, I have the utmost dedication to becoming not only a skilled surgeon, um, but remind of the great people that have helped me uh, and shaped me along my way. And I truly believe that that will be you in your future. So uh, thank you. You've done an excellent job. <laughs> the false security yes. of Dr. Sato being here <laughs> And the number one reason, uh, you know you were a surgical resident, you're pregnant. <laughs> and no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Round of applause for the intern. Take a shot. with their video. So one last chance to give a round of applause to all of our graduating Wait. chiefs. <laughs> I want you to clap before you are all offended. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. another dead gut consult in the MICU or, you know, all the usual abscess stuff, whatever other surgeons don't want to operate on. You know, there's probably another symposium on, like, um, you know, breast surgical oncology and uh, acute first surgery. Oh, well, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have some sort of robotic or high pack or robotic high pack something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, let's look at the schedule. Oh no, guys, look! The staff have curriculum next week. Oh no. You know what that means? I'll probably have to round and make my own decisions. <laughs> you know what else that means? We're going to have to operate by ourselves. I mean, where are we going to make these decisions? You know what the worst part is, though? The thing that gets me every time? Is having to organize my day in a way that's efficient for me and the team is that I can do things when I'm outside of the hospital on my own time. It just sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing, too, is didn't they just happen? Yeah, they did. And it's obvious it didn't do any good. <laughs> we all know they weren't out just having a good time. <laughs> I mean, it's not like they're ever on service anyway. They're always at like some academic conference or taking over some other hospital somewhere in like, Wisconsin. I love this. <laughs> Some skill stations in the operating room. Now, 
I don't want to be bitching or, or belly aching about how this is education over clinical activity because I just heard enough of that. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, our first patient is a 56-year-old gentleman. He has a history of diabetes, Dr. Evans. Uh, this patient is a 56-year-old uh, with a newly diagnosed pancreatic mass. Oh, oh good. It's a pancreas cancer. What's the patient's performance then? <laughs> well, he has a pronosty score of 92. Wait, this is where you're taking the patient's battery because if you're going to take them to the operating room, you're going to have to have Well, actually, uh, this patient uh, uh, really would like to withdraw uh, life-sustaining therapies at this point. Uh, this may not be a, a great case for the operating room. Yeah, I was taking care of the strict 
this is a this is a chief level hemorrhoid. Hemorrhoids are very important. <laughs> <laughs> they were the, 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 the proctologists in this community were the highest paid surgeons in town. Uh, this is a chief level hemorrhoid. Call a neurology consult. Be thoughtful. And that's the same as the world is full of cactus, but you don't have to sit there. Total freaking disaster. Let the electrons do the work. Give them yogurt. Uh, no cutting, no hurry. And what are you famous for? Well, I'm glad you ended with something worthwhile. <laughs> What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lay in me your ears and I'll sing you a song. I will try not to sing out of me. Oh, baby. Ha, ha, ha. 